welcome to the Assistant Room Podcast Season 2. We are the go-to online community for assistants around the world. And if you're looking for some serious career inspiration from some of the best and brightest executive assistants, you're in the right place. If we haven't met before, or if you're just joining us, I'm Jessica Gardner, founder of award-winning PAEA membership platform, The Assistant Room. Make sure you hit the follow button to keep up to date with all of our future episodes. But without further ado, welcome to season two of The Assistant Room podcast. In this episode, I speak to Sam Young, Executive Assistant to the Communications Director at global news platform, The Guardian. With a fascinating career spanning the Metropolitan Police, working for the Ministry of Justice, the City of London Police, Salesforce, and most recently, The Guardian, Sam and I chat about the importance of diversity and workplace culture, the LGBTQ plus initiative he was involved with at the Metropolitan Police, and the impact that had on the wider workforce, how to present a new idea to your boss and anticipate any bottlenecks and his views on how companies can develop employee engagement for maximum happiness at work. Welcome. Thank you for being here with us on this really, really hot London day. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's brilliant. Well, let's get started. So you've had an amazing career so far. Yeah. We've had a good chat about it a couple of times. You started as a junior clerk, though. Clerk, 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 clerk. junior clerk at Keating Chambers. So why don't you kind of give us an idea about everything that's happened since then, but also what a junior clerk actually does, okay. for those who don't know. I'd love to. Um, so now we're in 2022. I started as a junior clerk at 2012. That was my first job in an office 10 years ago. It's gone very quickly. Um, Basically, as an executive assistant and a barrister's clerk, it's very similar. I like to think as a junior clerk, you're like an office junior. You sort of like work up a hierarchy between a junior clerk all the way up to a managing director. So you'd probably be like 20 years in service if you were a managing director of a, or a senior clerk. I loved being a barrister's clerk. It was really good, and it sort of formed the basis of wanting to be an executive assistant later along in the career. Now I'm sort of working as a... I was working as a barrister's clerk for a couple of years. Now I'm working as an executive assistant to a comms team at The Guardian, in the newspaper. So it's Very quite cool. the change. Um, I've also had a few different other roles. I've been a judge's clerk. So I supported a high-end sort of like judge uh, in the commercial court. Also, I was a police officer for a very small period of my career for about 18 months very cool judges clerk sounds quite scary it was actually a lot it sounds of, very intimidating it was very intimidating a lot of clients a lot of um import a lot of writing of documents which are you know quite interesting mm. quite scary and what was your role as the police officer obviously we know typically what yeah. that involves but as you said it's all very different it is um i was out on team so i was in a blues and twos in a car racing to, to loads of reports um seen a lot of stuff in my career um that's probably the scariest but most fun point of it but um yeah i was out on team wow arresting people <laughs> talking to witnesses <laughs> yeah it's oh my god how exciting so you've done so many different things then it's like one end of the spectrum to the other is you've just had your fingers in all sorts of parts i think it's come round a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> From working as a as an executive assistant my first ea role in the city of london i was very lucky to sort of interview for a job which i was interested in at the city of london yeah I had my background as a police officer, so naturally I think that sort of like slipped, slipped in. Very cool. So we spoke on the phone, mm-hmm. obviously about that transition. Yep. And I think I, I think I mentioned how some people probably would struggle mm. to see how you went from a very typically masculine role mm. as a police officer, and obviously men and women can be police officers, yep. into what is typically seen as a female-dominated mm. role mm. of an EA which obviously men and women can also do. What was your experience of of that? You know, did you get any opinions or did anyone say, you know, oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah, I did actually. I I won't mention where, but I got a comment at one point in my career um, from saying, oh, that's that's an EA's job. Oh, don't worry about that. That's, you know, just that's what the secretary is. That's what the PA sort of do. And I I challenged that at at that time. And I'm glad I did because it demonstrates that you know, you have the male, female divided as a PA, and it's kind of been ironed out now. It's plateauing and into a sense of, you know, it's a very 
everyone's got their right to, to a certain job. But I think moving into that industry from a very heavy focus of like rough and tumble of, of the police, it was naturally, people did go, oh, so you've changed quite a bit. I was happy to do that. That's, that's what I wanted to do. And I don't, I don't miss it at all. But a few eye, eyebrows have been raised a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we're, we're quite proud for season two mm. to hopefully have, or, or season one we just had on the podcast, all women. Yep. And season two, I think you're our third guy, oh, which good. is really nice. And, and hopefully in season three, we'll have more guys. That's we good. were planning on having a 50-50 split on this, on this season, but that didn't quite work out for a number of different reasons. Mm. But I just love how you transitioned and kind of took on that that sort of, I suppose that stigma mm. coming into the role as a male EA. I mean, what advice would you give to other men potentially thinking about becoming an EA? Do it, apply for the jobs. Great for advice, just, just do it. Just go and do it because <laughs> you will, we see nowadays in all types of businesses, managing directors, CEOs, all C-suite are female and female. The split is how it should be. Mm. And I don't see any different for be an executive assistant. I think the first thing you talk about as being an executive assistant is leaders or like a leader's assistant, assistant leader. Yeah. I think naturally over the next couple of years, five years, we're going to see EA types move into business managers or an admin business partner. I think naturally, if you're a man looking to go into a career, which you think you can start at the, the very bottom and lead your way to anything you want to do, you can touch so many different departments as an executive assistant. So just go and do it. Go and build a network at the start and just... You know, take that chance because I love my job. I work with loads of male uh, PAs, EAs and support staff at my current job and have done before. And they would say the exact same thing. They, yeah. they love it. Yeah. I always say that I couldn't have started the assistant room without being a PA first. Mm. You're going through business mentoring school. Yep. It's the most incredible experience. I think if you utilize it in the right way, it can be so rewarding. 100%. But if you have a good boss. You do. And if you have a good company you work for. Yeah. That's, it's finding that natural balance between who you're working for and what company to, to progress. Because some it can hin can hinder you sometimes, but if you're lucky and you work with a good team, yeah, and that kind of feeds into company culture, yep. which I know that is a big focus of our conversation. Yep. So, why is culture important to you? I think, as again, as I mentioned, as an, an executive assistant, you can touch so many different departments. So. Being at the forefront of your sort of industry, you have to be able to work with different departments and say, right, this is going right, this is going wrong. A lot of people in EA roles are spoken to by a lot of different people, so they'll be your go-to. So if you don't sort of like put yourself out there, I think you're losing out on opportunities to build and help your company grow in whatever way. Um, I've been very lucky at the companies that I've worked with, they're a very positive and inclusive culture. They like to experience change. They want to be told what's wrong, what's going wrong and what's going right. And as an EA, you've got that ability to be able to shift that along with them. Um, that influence. That influence. Yeah. yeah. So talking about the different things that you've been involved in, because mm. I know that, you know, kind of following the track record of your career being very varied, yeah. you've had so many different types of exposure to mm -hmm. different types of cultural change. Mm in the different organizations that you work in. And I know that we spoke about the um, LGBTQ plus initiative yep. that you were part of. So can you kind of talk us through a bit more about that? You know, where was that? What was your part That's in cool. that? What yeah. was the impact of that? Uh, that was a really important part for me because it helped the rest of my career from leaving the, from the, that job to the next because the person who I supported was the national lead for LGBTQ um, for the for the Superintendent's Association for the Police for City of London. So it was a very big remit, a lot of people, and it's a problematic area um, in, in policing generally. You know, you, you don't na naturally show out as who you naturally are. For example, there's been issues about wearing badges on cops' uniforms. You know, they've, they've gone over that now. You'll now see pride, you'll see police officers in the, um, in, sorry, in, in the, what is it called? when they're out on the street in force mm -hmm. in terms of networking and sort of like displaying who they are and saying, look, this is what we're happy with. I think it's really important to do that because in diversity and inclusion, the clue there is in, in inclusion. So I'm straight home, it's heterosexual, but that doesn't mean anything in terms of who you know you work with. So my 
leader who I worked with was he was aware of that and we helped coordinate and built a strand based off of nothing for the rest of the country um, in the superintendents association and the police so I think that's amazing. it was really it was really happy with the work that we did um, it was quite challenging um, and it's built what I do now so in the Guardian I've just nominated myself to work on the diversity and inclusion board uh, I've just start, started doing that now so it's really good wow so you're very used to kind of putting yourself forward yep and raising your hand and saying, I want to be part of this. I mean, what advice would you give to anybody who wants to get involved in something, but they're a bit afraid? You've got to be a bit cautious, I think, because mm -hmm. it's very important for a lot of people. If people are able to sort of like talk out on, naturally people don't talk out on their jobs. They you know, they want to be able to do their nine to five and go home. But I think if they want to build something for the, for the rest of their career, you know, they need a helping hand sometimes. Yeah. So I think if you've got that ability to talk to people, sort of negotiate, build rapport, it's a, it's a coordinating function a lot of the time in diversity and inclusion strands. It's helping people see, you know, we could build this project to help with this particular area. So just go ahead and do it, you know, take that chance, talk to people, build a network because um, naturally there's probably is a problem to fix somewhere in the company. Absolutely. Well, there's always problems to yeah. fix everywhere. I think companies that don't, well, the companies that think they've figured everything out mm. are the companies that are going to fail the quickest, yeah. really. Okay, so obviously City of London, yep. you're involved in cultural change there. At The Guardian, yep. you're involved in cultural change there. Mm -hmm. Have there been any key bottlenecks that you've, experienced throughout your time of creating that cultural change whether that's a bottleneck to do with people mm. or process or finances you know have you have you noticed anything that's a kind of recurring theme throughout all of these i'd say probably you've hit the nail on the head there it's either people or process you'll mm. see with people it's people's skills their skill set naturally people will be if they're underwhelmed they won't shout up and say this is a problem we need to get more resourcing uh, better products for example you know in current lines of work that i do people naturally will keep themselves to themselves so i think as an ea you've got to be able to see that bottleneck and say right maybe we need to help with resourcing with this bit move this bit of work over there or actually maybe we're not doing very good at all we need to hire someone else um the biggest um in terms of and an additional support network um in terms of processes it's probably more budgetary and finances as where i've seen bottlenecks before um you know really deep into a world of technology now. So I think, you know, you look at any sort of like systems that you've got, if they're antiquated, you're gonna, there's gonna be a churn and it's gonna cause a lot of problems sort of like down the line. I'm quite lucky in the companies that I've worked for, they're using good products and good systems. So I don't find that at the moment is a current issue of mine, but it has been before. It has been. And yeah. I think that's, it's lovely to hear that from somebody who's been through all of those changes, because then people can preempt those issues yep. when they're, you know, finally brave enough to put their hand up yeah. and do a bit of a Sam Young yep. and, you know, be part of that cultural change. Yeah. Um, I think this is all amazing. I mean, if you were to look back at everything you've experienced so far and everything that you've been involved in, mm. if we talk about impact happening in the shortest amount of time, where have you seen that occur? Because I think mm. big change can be very difficult mm. to create or to think about to map out and create yeah. and obviously the bigger the change the harder you're going to get or the more difficult you're going to find it is to get people on board with because people just don't like change they don't um so what are the the small things that people could potentially start doing or that you've seen create the biggest impact straight away i think now the biggest one to go to it's screaming out in front of us is the work from home sort of like debate i think if you work for a company or you don't work for a company who has the ability to work hybridly you've got to take that sort of like we've got to build that initiative because you look at employees they want to move to a company where they feel where they're happy comfortable mm -hmm. I think now with you know all the Google products we've got, you know everything the Zoom, mm -hmm. we can do so many meetings hybridly. It's sort of like as an individual, you can harness that and be able to say, do you know what? Well, actually, it's not productive for me to do my forty hours in the week. You're actually going to get a lot more out of me if I'm able to take a doctor's appointment, you know, one day, or you know, finish early on another day to fit start earlier. I think a lot of companies are seeing that now, especially in interviewing and you know going for the best mm -hmm. candidates. They're going. The best candidates want to be able to move to a company where they can harness that and push forward and, you know, 
work hybrid work hybridly yeah absolutely i i think culture mm. is a company's legacy mm-hmm. that's what that's what i would describe yeah. A company's culture is it's that legacy they're creating that they're going to be known for going yeah. forward years and years and years and years and kind of drawing on the idea of people wanting to work for the as you said the best candidates wanting to work for a company that does offer a great culture whether yeah. that's hybrid working yeah. or um you know exploring a D- dei strand as mm. you've spoken about quite regularly if you're somebody going through the process of finding a new role mm-hmm. How important is it, do you think, that you really dig deep on a company's culture before signing the contract? It's pivotal. I think it's yeah, the first absolutely. thing I'd be doing. I think when you're interviewing, you've got to be, it's two way. Mm. You've got to be able to assess that person and whoever you're interviewing with and et cetera, to say, well, actually, do I want to be part of this culture? I think you look at the person who's interviewing you, what kind of questions are they asking you? What's important to them? Try and sense what their priorities are day to day for the next quarter and for the next year, because you will find out naturally, you know, you could become stuck in a few months or a year in a culture which they didn't sell you at, at, at interview stage. You know, it's quite, it's quite a difficult market as an executive assistant. You know, there's a lot of jobs going, but there's a lot of people as well. People, you know, we're trying to break new people into the career. So do your research make sure that you ask those questions um, because it can sort of like stem the rest of your career. Yeah, and and ultimately culture and the person you work for is the reason why you're either gonna be happy in your role it or is. unhappy in it's your role. It is, it's the make and break, it really is. Absolutely, we we say this a lot of the time because we, um, we have a headhunting element of the assistant mm. room. So I work very closely with some brilliant CEOs yeah. trying to find new EAs and PAs. And whenever anyone comes to me with a job description that is the same as it was three years ago, I always go back and say, right, we need to revisit this. Because every job description for PAs and EAs, or 75% of them look exactly the same. Where's that element of understanding what the exec wants, their values, you know, whether those values match your values. As you said, what's coming up in the next six months, you know, where can you make impact? That is where, and and DNR, DEI, and Mm. all the different initiatives that they have going on, that is what creates a very special role for a PA. 100%, I agree. You've got to interview the interviewer. Absolutely, (laughs) two-way street. I mean, what's it like at The Guardian? It's great, it's fantastic. Um, I've landed myself in a really nice role, working with a brilliant comms team. Mm -hmm. I've got a great exec. Um, A lot of, you know, it's a very good, it's an inclusive culture. It's a lot of people who are doing things for the right reason. You know, you've got various departments who are doing very difficult jobs. Um, they're out there as journalists. We've got a commercial department as well. It's, it's a great job. Um, it's probably the perfect job for this perfect stage of my career. That's yeah. where I describe it, really. And every single time we talk about them, you are so complimentary of them. So yeah. they must be doing something, right? Yeah, <laughs> they, they gave me some advice to come to the podcast. Oh, they did? They did. What was that advice? Said, Can speak you share? slowly. Speak slowly. Speak slowly, clearly. Clearly. Enun- pr- enunciate. Enunciate. Yeah. Enunciate. And don't wear any sort of striped colours. Oh, very, very... Exactly. Uh, well, I'm wearing spots, so <laughs> maybe spots. I should have probably taken their advice. No patterns. Um, okay, so considering how amazing everything is at the guardian yeah. and as i said you are so complimentary of them and um obviously they give you so many different opportunities in your experience of them and also your previous roles where have you seen people getting culture right and where have you seen even if it's not just in your role but with other pas and eas or other people that you know where have you seen companies go wrong when it comes to culture I think it's difficult to to explain. I think in terms of lockdown, that help that didn't help at all. Um, mm. People sort of like thrown into their homes um, to be able to people lock themselves away and sort of unless you were sort of like requested to do meetings, you didn't have that ability to network. Um, I think that's probably naturally why I looked to to move from a previous job I was in to, to where I am now. Um, I think culture done well probably at the City of London when I started there. I worked with uh, the boxing club. So we did that, that was really good because it helped with mental health, fitness, well-being. I think that was probably the highlight of my career in terms of a culture because it it, it, it touched everyone. We had loads of the C-suite, we had loads of people who were oh, low down wow. the organization. 
in the boxing in the boxing ring it was really good please tell me that the ceo is in the boxing ring at some point yeah we, yeah we, ha- we <laughs> had you, we had a few people yeah can you imagine if you had something out for one of the execs or can you imagine if you were a pa and your boss was in a boxing ring That'd and you were <laughs> you were able to get your hands on them for the first time that would be brilliant i'd love to see that <laughs> I'm hilarious. sure there would be so many PAs and EAs wishing to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite worrying there probably would be. Yeah. Okay, so that was done well. And then mm. if you think about, as I said, not just in your role, other mm. roles, but in things that you've observed, where have people gone wrong? Is it the, is it kind of not listening to people? Is it, you know, not taking things yeah. on board? You know, where, where are companies going wrong in your opinion? I think it's probably when you don't take on feedback. I think it's really yeah. important. I think if you ask people, if you consult people, you know, how your daily job is going, you know, what can we change? What can we do for you? And you don't listen to that advice. I think that's where I've seen it go wrong. Um, you can you can do as you can offer as much development as possible. But if it's not specifically what people are after, people will either leave or they'll stagnate. I think it's simply that way. I think where I've places I've worked before, um, They've been really good at doing that, but you naturally, you need to develop. Uh, certainly as an executive assistant, you can't sit still, you can't be idle. Yeah, so it's all about communication. Communication is key. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, on the topic of communication for yeah. our, you know, penultimate question. Okay. If you're a PA and you, or an EA, if you have an idea that you want to develop, mm. especially if it's a new idea, or maybe you're revisiting an old idea, whatever it is, mm. How do you present that to your boss when it comes to cultural development? I think make yourself known, participate. I think you've got to have your daily meetings with your execs so you can get your voice heard. I think if you're not active in your involvement as an executive assistant, I think you're more likely, more prone for it to fall on deaf ears. So if you're involving yourself in the community of the business, you're naturally going to come, you're going to find issues and things to work out and you'll find an idea of your own and be creative with it and go and go with sort of like optimism and confidence because they hired you for a reason they've got you as an executive assistant or PA to a team so you balance that team very well you know I find sometimes as an EA I've got a different voice to the rest of the team sometimes they'll go oh we didn't hear about that we didn't think about that and I think that's that's why you're brought in sometimes Um, it's that perspective isn't it on the same sort of topic, I think it's why every PA should have an exit interview Definitely. because you have that unique perspective for your bosses. I mean, why wouldn't you want to have that feedback from people who work directly with the C-suite? Because you see things and you hear things that nobody else does. I agree completely. Um, I've had a couple of exit interviews and some places that I've left, I haven't. I think naturally um, it's a great opportunity to understand why someone's left, you know, mm. have you sought the right candidate when you've hired for that per- person who's left? Have they left a void or something, or is there a particular reason why you haven't found another candidate to replace yourself or going forward for other roles? I think exit interviews are a really g- good way of, you know, helping to build company culture going forward because you can find out what problems exist in your company. Um, yeah, and whether you can, whether you're actually living up to the quotas mm. that you set. I think so many companies have like a bit of paper that says, you know, we support this and we support that, and then it actually completely falls flat. When it boils down to it, you haven't actually done yeah, any exactly. of those things. No, and that's such a shame because the amount of resources that go into creating those things. Exactly. I mean, you know firsthand, you've been integral to creating all of those different cultural initiatives. Yep. It does go back, and I, I know I said this earlier, but I think culture is a company's legacy. No one's going to remember you for being, well, obviously they would remember you for being on like the FTSE 100. Yeah. But as the CEO, what do you want to be known for more, leading a company that smashes its financial target or leading a company that instigates change to support shared parental leave yeah. or the LGBTQ plus yep. um, you know, initiative that you led? You know, what, what's actually important to you? And coming back to the interview side of things, mm. that's what you should be really asking, isn't it? What's important to you? It is, 100% agree. Right, okay, so let's go to our last question. Yep. Think back, everything to do with your career so far. Okay. If you were to give Sam on day one, and this is a question we ask everybody, if you were to give Sam on day one a bit of advice, yep. what would that be? 
don't buy so many ties because you're going to be working from home in about 10 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the best bit of advice. No, um, un- unconditionally support everyone who you work with. I think because you you can build lasting friendships at work. It's, it's really important to do that. I think looking back, how I started, I think I got very quick, quickly into the competition for where should I be in my career? I need to do this really quickly. Maybe I need to take that next step take the time, sort of like strip it back, make really important connections um, with people that are gonna that are gonna last because, you know, we all work hard. It's a very hustle and bustle of the industries that all we work in, you will get there. So I'll probably tell myself just to, you know, step it back just a little bit. Slow down. Slow down, enjoy it. Because now we're sitting here at 10 years time and you know, I love my career and it's really good, but you could have enjoyed those early years a little bit more. Um, stressing out and thinking okay i've got i'm in competition for places to do all these certain things i think you've got to be able to slow down a little bit and take it easy take it easy thank you sam thank you very much thanks for listening make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow us on linkedin facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all of our future episodes and if you're looking for a place to focus on your personal and professional development we have a place in the assistant room membership with your name on it Head to our website for more information on how to sign up and become part of our award-winning online global community for assistance everywhere.